Unit 16, Part 5, so I was working towards the different definition of validity between sentential logic and uh, predicate logic. Okay, so remember the attempt to find a counterexample for modus ponens, right? We found that no possible assignment of truth values to the P and the Q um, could be found whereby the premises were both true and the conclusion false, right? And since no such assignment was possible, we could infer that that argument form was valid. Um, in quantifier logic, arguments in quantifier logic, there's a complication, right? Very crucial is the definition of validity in quantifier logic. It's the third of the three definitions she gives you at the end of the chapter on page 319. And notice how there are two quantifiers in this definition, in the English definition. An argument in, an argument in quantifier logic is valid if and only if there is no counterexample in any domain. It is invalid if and only if there is some domain in which there is a counterexample. Okay, so keep the attempt in uh, for modus ponens in mind. In quantifier logic, right, where we uh, an argument in quantifier logic is valid only when there are no counterexamples in any domain, right? So if you specify a domain of two individuals and you give your interpretation, as we have here, for the premises and conclusion, um, right, converting the universal statements into conjunctions and the existential statements into disjunctions, right, and if we know now go about attempting to assign truth value to the atoms, which are the, the AA, the AB, the BA, the BB, that's all of them, right, and if we, if we now get to the stage that we arrived at for the attempted modus, attempt to find a counterexample for modus ponens, right, for the attempt for modus ponens, we got there, we couldn't find a counterexample, we could infer that the argument form is valid. You can't do that for arguments in quantifier logic because of this double, the double quantifier in the definition. Because an argument in quantifier logic is only valid if there are no counterexamples in any domain. So just because you can't find an assignment of truth values to the parts after the translation, which makes the premises true and the conclusion false in a domain of two individuals, does not mean there isn't a counterexample in the domain of three individuals, or four individuals, or five individuals, right? And it's only valid, an argument in quantify logic is only valid if there are no counterexamples in any domain at all of no matter how many individuals, okay? So this does matter for your attempt to show that an argument is invalid in quantifier logic. So I'm just going to tell you the way you should go about answering the question, right? Because, right, should I start with a domain of 12 individuals and, have an, and make that attempt? And if that doesn't work, what do I do, right? If I can't find one there, should I go up to 13? Um, just do this. <coughs> um, start with a domain of two individuals, right? Take your argument. The first step is specify the domain, and I am telling you what you should do. You should specify a domain of two individuals. Just say, my domain is A and B, right? Write out, right, translate your quantifier statements so that um, you specify their meaning in this domain of two individuals, just as we've done here. The universals will become a conjunction of conjunctions, right? Existentials will become uh, disjunctions. Right? So you do that and you attempt to do an assignment, which I'll do now, um, to try and make the premises true and the conclusion false. And that's like the um, honing in on a counterexample that we did to start this unit 16. Now, you have to be aware, um, if you can't find a counterexample here, right? if you see that it's impossible in this domain of two individuals to find an assignment of truth values to the parts, which makes the premises all true and the conclusion false, you cannot infer that therefore the argument is valid, right? 
you haven't, uh, you can't be sure that it, it's, you can't be sure that it's valid. It might be invalid. It is invalid if a counterexample exists in a domain of more individuals. So what you should do, if you you should start with a domain of two individuals, and if you can't find um, an interpretation, if you can't find a counterexample in that domain, go to a, do an, a domain of three individuals. Okay, let me try three individuals, A, B, and C. So, um, and let me now rewrite the uh, statements again in this domain of three individuals, and um, let me now try and find, find a counterexample for this domain. And if that doesn't work, um, well, I'll tell you this. In the exam, I'm going to give you an argument that is invalid. So <laughs> if it doesn't work, if you can't find one in a domain of three individuals, go back and find your mistake. Okay? <laughs> so start with two individuals. Um, if you can't find a counterexample in a domain of two individuals, go to three individuals. If you can't find one there, um, you've made a mistake. Right? Um, okay? So let's, let's do this one. Um, that was our argument, right? We've translated the um, quantifier statements into true functional statements, right? Into conjunctions and disjunctions, as so. And now we do what we did with the uh, unit five one, with the short truth table method to prove an argument invalid, right? So we, we're trying to find a counterexample, so, um, right? If we have one, this will be TFFT or whatever it is. Right? That'll be my final answer. Will be in that form. See, I've listed my atoms. I want that the first premise to be true, the second premise to be true, and the conclusion to be false. Okay. Um, the conjunction has to be true. So um, both of these conjunctions have to be true. Let's try this. Um, one way of making the uh, conclusion false is just make, you know, making one conjunct false suffices, right? Let's try this. Make that false. B, A is false, um, right? That suffices for making the conclusion false. Okay, so now we'll go make, go make B, A, false everywhere, there's none here, there's one here, that's false and that's it. Okay, this has to be true, right? Conjunction is only true when they're both true, so this conjunct has to be true, so now A, A has to be false, right? If that were true, it would be true or false, it could be false. So A, A, we've made A, A false, right? A, A is false there, it also appears here. Um, so that makes that means A B has to be true. This disjunction has to be true. Um, that disjunct is false. So this disjunct has to be true. So we've got A B true. Um, so A B is true over here. Now to make to keep this first premise true, the second disjunct has to be true. I've got Right. This has to be true. I've got T hook. This has to be true. Right. If this was false, I have T hook false, and that would be false, which would make this false. So good. BB has to be true. But I think that does it. I think I've satisfied the conditions of finding a counterexample. Right? I've, um, with AA false and BA false, right? uh, AB. A, B, yeah, A, B, and B, A, both false, but A, B, and B, B, both true. And that makes that true, yes. Um, that's enough for that. Okay, have it. That's it, right? We have found a counterexample, right? We, so in, a domain, in this domain of two individuals, we have found a, a counterexample. This, assign, this is, sorry. We've, sh we've used the model universe method to show that this argument is invalid. How? We specified our domain of two individuals. We rewrote our quantifier statements to state what they mean in this domain. This, do this first premise said that all A's are B's, which means two things are true. If Andrew is an A, then Andrew is a B. And if Betty is an A, then Betty is a B. Right? Told us that there was an Australian, 
or there was something, there was an Australian, so either uh, Andrew is Australian or Betty is Australian, they're telling us that that's what that means in this domain, and they're telling, telling us that everything is B, so both A and B are both B. Right? That's what these, that's what those statements of the arguments mean in this domain, but we can, if, if A, A is false, A, B true, B, A false, B, A true, on that assignment of truth values, the premises, tr the premises are true and the conclusion false, okay? The important point is in the translation from the quantifier statement, in that, in that translation, they become truth functional, making the semantic interpretation, the semantic demonstration of the invalidity of the argument possible, right? But again, if we failed there, right? Crucial thing about the new definition of validity for arguments in quantifier logic is this, it's for every domain thing, right? An argument in quantifier logic is valid if and only if. There is no counterexample in any domain. So if we failed to, right, if we, if we came to a point like the point for the attempt for proving notice ponens invalid, if we came to a point where we said no assignment of truth values to the atoms here makes the premises true and the conclusion false, we cannot make the inference. We cannot say, um, well, the argument is valid for this domain. No, that's not what validity means for quantifier arguments. We haven't shown it's valid, nor have we shown it's valid for this domain. We've shown that we can't find a counterexample in this domain, but the argument is valid or not, and it is, um, for all that we've shown so far, it's quite possible that um, counterexamples exists in domains of three individuals and so on. So if in your exam, right, so the question is just like this, you um, fail to right, you, you fail to find an assignment which make which uh, you fail to make the premises true and the conclusion false. You move on to a domain of three individuals, right? Do that. Show me you know what you're doing, um, and have a go at that. All right.